episode 11. Today we are all about synthetic fibers. So uh, we've got a couple different things we can do with these between building a tail, building a body, or we're also going to talk about building a brush and build your own brush with these, um, which I really like for both bodies and heads. So one of the things we are going to start with is EP fibers. And to start, I'm going to give you a tip. So this is a package, a new package of EP fibers. One of the things you want to do when you get these in is take them out of the package and put a zip tie wrap around the top of them. That'll really help save you from these things becoming just a huge mess. So that's my pro tip of the day. One of the other things you can do with a synthetics, uh, there's different ways of building these. You can add a lot of your own materials to them is a brush. So this is a, uh, this is a brush that uh, is made by a popular company, but I like the taper in it. You can add a lot of different materials like craft furs. You can even add bucktail, things like that. So you can have some thicker material in the middle and then interspersed with some longer materials to get a taper effect. So you can tie tails in with these synthetic brushes and it works really well because these brushes are uh, totally waterproof. They don't hold any water in here. So your casting, it's not gonna be very affected even though you can add a lot of bulk to a fly. But you've already seen us how to tie in tails in previous episodes, just like you tie in flashaboo is the same way that I would tie in this as a tail. Um, and you can even combine those two, uh, add this in and then add some flashaboo around it uh, is a really cool method. Or you can take the time to pack it or stack it just like we did with the dubbing heads. You can use this material to do the same thing and pack the synthetic fibers forwards and then trim them down afterwards. But one of my favorite things to do is to use it as a brush. We talked about a little bit in the dubbing episode on how to build a brush, but we're gonna go do the same uh, technique here, but with some thin synthetic fibers. So one of the coolest things about fly tying is being able to customize your own flies. And today I'm gonna to show you how to tie a brush on your fly that you cannot purchase at a store, uh, just with some different materials that you can kind of come up with. So today I have a tan and an olive brush that we're going to make. So I've got those colors of EP fiber here already pulled out. I'm going to be using these tweezers again to be able to help me hold the materials for this loop. First things first is because it's a kind of a streamer loop or a streamer brush, I'm going to make a larger loop. So if you need a little refresher course on how to make a loop like this, hop back over to the dubbing episode. I'm going to trim some of these fibers down to size. We don't want to make, try to make a brush with the fibers that are that, that are as long as, uh, as they come. So we're just going to stagger the colors and trim them down to, uh, about three to four inches in length to start with. Once the, once the uh, brush is tied in, we can trim it even further if we want, but we'll just start here. So remember that if you end up cutting it, or if you, whatever length you cut, we're going to palmer it in the middle of this rope. So remember, it's going to end up being uh, only an inch and a half if you cut it to three inches. Or if you cut it to four inches, it's only going to be a two inch long brush. Or however that math works out. I'm no mathologist. So we're going to take our uh, nice tweezers here. We're going to run it right up the middle of this material. And then we're going to uh, just slowly open the, open the tweezers just a little bit to start letting this stuff fall down and kind of spread out. We don't want it to be one huge clump in the loop. Now that we've got that set, we've got our uh, loop spinner. Open that loop up. insert our 2B made brush and then we can kind of keep, we want to keep downward pressure pulling on this loop to keep it closed, but we can kind of come through and help spread and orient these fibers so that they're nice and even in the loop. Next step is let's spin it. So here we go, we've got kind of a cool color, tan and green here. 
So the next thing we want to do is take our bodkin, our nice sharp needle here, and just kind of run it up the base of this rope thread so that we can start pulling out some of the trapped fibers. And once we have that done, we've got our nice loop here. We're going to start spinning this till we get down into the brush. Now that we hit the brush, we're going to start wrapping it forwards. Just going pretty, pretty slow, being able to help pull the fibers rearwards with our left hand while we spin. These fibers that I used are pretty stiff, so they're going to want to kind of stick forwards. So that's why I'm just slowly pulling them backwards as I wrap. Kind of get them set, hopefully behaving right, pull backwards, get that next wrap. It's going to look a little, little wonky for the first minute here until we are able to go in and trim out, uh, or until we're able to go in and pull out the stuck fibers. So we're going to tie this off. And uh, again, if you guys need any sort of... Uh, a, a longer tutorial on how to do the loop. Go back to the dubbing episode where we talk about a dubbing loop. So now we're just going to tie this in and make sure that we nice and get get that into that locked down. Now we're going to come back in with this bodkin and start teasing these fibers out. A lot of those, as you saw as I was wrapping, were getting trapped kind of in there. So we're just going to easy and kind of trim these or uh, just kind of pull these fibers out. my thread nice and tight and then wrap down on top of it. There we have it. We've got our own custom brush that we made with some tan and olive uh, synthetic fibers. So not the most beautiful thing on the planet, but gives you a little bit of an idea of what you could do with this. You could have your tail backwards. You can make this into a head. You could trim this down into a, into a body, or uh, you could taper it and make it into a minnow shape. Uh, lots of different options here. But that's the reasons that uh, brushes are extremely popular, and hopefully you start making your own. Well, guys, hopefully you've appreciated some of the synthetics. Uh, hopefully you guys go out and buy you a run of them. They are a little more expensive, but uh, one of those packages does tend to last you quite a long time. I think you'll really enjoy tying with them and uh, definitely takes some of your streamers to the next level, being able to have all sorts of different colors um, and mixing and matching them. Uh, hope you liked how you tie a brush. Brushes are pretty dang cool. We really hope that you guys start utilizing that. Uh, I just love the versatility of the brush. And guys, remember, we are doing a giveaway at the end of this series. Make sure you subscribe to the Blue Line YouTube channel. Make sure you're following Blue Line on Instagram. Please share these videos with your friends, especially the uh, newer guys who are just getting into tying. We'd love to have them watch some of our videos and hopefully get that jump start they need to get on tying. And we appreciate you watching. Sincerely, from the Blue Line team. Hobo Steve, I don't know what he's doing today, but we'll see you guys in the next episode where we are talking about articulating a fly. That's a question we get a lot, is how do you actually put that uh, whole contraption together? And... Uh, now we're getting into the good stuff, so stay tuned.